Good morning. Wow, look at that. Woohoo. I'm excited. Um, I'm Hildy Cardacci, and I have a couple of announcements. Um, I just wanted to report back that ACT uh, had the big meeting. There were 99 people in person and 207 online. Woohoo! And they discussed uh, the fact that we had an action in July for Woodside Gardens. We did feed an Arundel that was, they uh, provided thousands, tens of thousands of meals to the Anne Arundel community. And then at the annual meeting, the county executive, Stuart Pittman, handed ACT uh, a check for, well, the check was for less, but ACT is getting $1.3 million in five increments over two years for a new program that is called Turnaround Tuesday that helps people that are returning from prison to find jobs on how to find jobs, et cetera, et cetera. In other words, we're walking with these people. It's a program. Uh, ACT is not actually doing the walking, but they will make sure that there is a program for them. Um, and there will be jobs provided by Luminous Hospital and Maryland Reentry Resource. There should be a real good program coming along for people returning from prison and entering normal life again. So um, on the pastor search, I'm on that committee and uh, we will meet later this week with two more candidates. We expect a decision sometime towards the end of December that we can announce who will be helping us after that for interim. Um, <laughs> the manger was sort of a little sad thing, but Pam Motes, uh, a member that has been coming here, provided straw and a cloth and also a new rainbow flag. This has nothing to do with baby Jesus, but <laughs> it's not a swaddling one. Um, the rainbow flag will go up whenever we can get it up there. So thank her. Pam is the lady in the purple outfit. Thank you very much. This is our pastor. And I already <laughs> he will introduce himself. <laughs> Thank him for coming. Okay, um, I think uh, Reverend Mopey needs a little better introduction than that. I'll get. To, I'll take my mask off too. Okay, Reverend Mopey is an ordained pastor in the United Church of Christ in Washington D.C. We had a wonderful. Um, biography on him in our Friday newsletter, so if you have not read that, please go back and read it. Uh, he's an, a, a person who has great talents and abilities, and we are very pleased to have you here today. Okay, before I get started, I just want to remind you, if you have not been here before, what our current operational rules are within the service, when we're very glad to have everybody here. We are asked that you wear a mask at all times. You are invited to sing along with our hymns, but you must be masked when you sing, and we would appreciate if you would remain physically distant from the people who are not in your household. The grace and peace of Christ be with you. Today we celebrate the second Sunday of Advent, a time when the church learned that Whenever we are celebrating, God is with us. My name is Dr. Martin Smith, and I am grateful to worship with you, church, on this day. I'm especially grateful to be here today because this is probably the largest number of people that we've had since we've come back you know, and opened a church for COVID, so we are 
especially grateful for that. Let us pause for a moment and be present in this space. Let us in silence reflect on the truth of how we feel in body and spirit in this moment. We're gonna ask you to silently take a few breaths at this time. God has called us together today in worship. Let us give that call voice with our call to worship. Beloved, God is indeed here with us. Come, let us worship and declare together to God, I will praise you as long as I live. In your name, I will lift my hands. Together with God, no, that nothing is impossible. With God, there was no peace and comfort through God's love. We can stand on solid foundation, knowing that all will be well. Even in the midst of the storm, we have calm. In the midst of sickness, we have healing. Even in the midst of dark times, we have clarity and vision. Nothing, no, not anything can separate us from the love of God. We can retreat into God's sanctuary, which is both in us and around us. The love, joy, and peace of the Lord be with you. Please share a sign of peace with each other by commenting on our live stream page. If you're on live stream, send a text or shout, wave peace to the world.
Good morning. How are you today? Good. So things are going good. How's school? Good. You ready for Christmas? Yeah. Are you ready for Christmas? You sure? Have you ever had times when you felt like you might be alone? Sort of? Um, kind of? Yeah. Sometimes maybe when your friends might not always, you may not always get along. Um, any, if you ever had fights with friends at school, hopefully not, but sometimes we do. Are you seen fights at school? You've seen many fights at school, right? <laughs> and so sometimes when people are fighting, they think that there's nobody loves them or that nobody is there for them or that no one understands them. And so what I wanted to share with you today is I'm sure that you've heard the song, Jesus Loves Me, this I know, and the song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. You've heard that one? Yeah. No, you haven't heard that one yet? You will. <laughs> it says, what a friend we have in Jesus all of our ills and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer, right? Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, right? So I wanted to, so I wanted to share the idea that God's got your back no matter what, that you are in God's hands, and that even when things get difficult, and as we get older, sometimes things get harder for us. So some of those folks out there might know what we're talking about, but what you can know, some of us, it took us a long time to figure out that God was with us, no matter where we went, no matter what was going on, and that we weren't alone. Sometimes as adults, we went our own way, right? So hopefully you will get this now and not go that way and not decide that you can't talk to God. The greatest thing is that you can just talk to God yourself. Not, how do we talk to God? Do we know how we talk to God? What do we do? We say our prayers. prayers. Yep. At night. At night or during the day, right? So we can say our prayers, talk to God. And the wonderful thing is that God talks back to us. Now, sometimes it's hard to know, but for me, and it may be different for everyone, but for me, there's like a little small voice that I can hear sort of guiding me along the way. Sometimes I might read something or see a sign somewhere and say, oh, okay, that's the message I've been asking God about. Sometimes it comes from other people. So for instance, your brothers, right? So you could be playing with each other and talking about something and you might be praying to God about something that's going on for you and your brother comes in and says something to you and it's the answer that you've been asking for from God. So God can use all of us, right? And God loves us. And so God is always with us. No matter what, you can count on God. No matter what, you can count on God. Even when our parents might let us down a little bit, maybe, sometimes, they love us. But even more than that, God loves us and God loves them. And so at the end of the day, no matter what's going on, you can count on God and you just simply have to remember what a friend I have in Jesus. So when you're at school, on the bus, playing with your friends, wherever you might go, princess, you can always remember that God is with us and that God loves you and you can count on God. Yeah? Make sense? You think, so? you, you think you can hold on to that and be encouraged? So, Enjoy your Christmas season. Have a wonderful Christmas season. Have a wonderful Kwanzaa season. Have a wonderful Hanukkah season. Um, just enjoy your friends and the community around you and know that we're going to make our way through all of this stuff that we're going on. And so it's going to get better for us because God, we can count on God. Amen. And we say the Lord's prayer together. Father, yes, Lord in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I should just keep this with me. <laughs> God, today in this place, your sanctuary, the physical building that we come to, to take a moment out of our days to recognize and to be with you and with each other. We know that this is just a physical place, but that the sanctuary you have for us is in us and all around us. So God, in this day, we invite you to be with us again in spirit, to unfold anew for us fresh revelations. And God, we are grateful, so grateful, for the coming of the Christ, for your sacrifice, for your love that never ends, for the joy and the peace that you give to each of us through our trials, through our tribulations, and in our great triumphs and great joy. In the name of all that is good and great, in the name of Jesus the Christ we pray. Amen. Trusting in God's forgiveness, let us in silence confess our failings and acknowledge our part in the world. This is a time of letting go, even in our emptiness, the repressed, the evil, the nothingness is all redeemed and we can let go. Before God, with the people of God, I confess to turning away from God in the ways I wound my life and the lives of others and the life of the world. May God forgive you, Christ renew you, and the Spirit enable you to grow in love. Amen before God, with the people of God, we, we confess, confess to turning away from God in the ways we wound our lives, the, the lives of others, and the life of, of the world. May God forgive you, Christ renew you, and the Spirit enable you to grow in love. Amen. We are co-creators with God in the work of our time. Listen now in the reading of scripture for the word and wisdom of God. We open our hearts to word and wisdom, wisdom of, of God. God. Our first reading is from 2 Kings chapter 6, verses 8 through 17. I am reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Once when the king of Aram was at war with Israel, he took counsel with his officers. He said, at such and such a place shall be my camp. But the man of God sent word to the king of Israel, take care not to pass this place because the Arameans are going down there. The king of Israel sent word to the place of which the man of God spoke. More than once or twice he warned such a place so that it was on the alert. The mind of the king of Aram was greatly perturbed. Because of this, he called his officers and said to them, now tell me who among us sides with the king of Israel. Then one of his officers said, No one, my lord king. It is Elisha, the prophet in Israel, who tells the king of Israel the words that you speak in your bedchamber. He said, Go and find where he is. I will send and seize him. He was told, He is in Dothan. So he sent horses and chariots there and a great army. They came in by night and surrounded the city. When an attendant of the man of God rose early in the morning and went out. An army with horses and chariots was all around the city. His servant said, Alas, master, what shall we do? He replied, Do not be afraid, for there are more with us than there are with them. Then Elisha prayed, O Lord, please open his eyes that he may see. 
So the Lord opened the eyes of the servant, and he saw the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. And the New Testament reading from the New Revised Standard Version, Luke 1, 68 through 79. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has looked favorably on his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a mighty savior among us in the house of his servant David. As he spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets of old, old, that we would be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. Thus he has shown the mercy promised to our ancestors and has remembered his holy covenant, the oath that he swore to our ancestor Abraham to grant us that we, being rescued from the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the forgiveness of their sins. By the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. God, in this time and in this moment, we seek your face. 
We seek your word for us today. We seek ways to grow in you and grace, ways to be even more of what you've called us to be, ways to be more servant leaders in your community, ways to make right the wrongs of this society, ways to make sure that there is no one who knows that they are not welcome in your home and at your table. God, in this time, we are seeking from you a fresh anointing. Bless now, open our minds and our hearts. God, speak to us, and we will be sure to listen, and we will be sure to act on the words you give. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. It is really a joy to be here. I have been so excited about coming for a while now. I was here with you in the summer during the General Senate worship service that we had, and it's just such an amazing place, so I appreciate, thank you so much for the invitation and the opportunity to be here with you today. I uh, wanted to talk with us today about being surrounded, and that Emmanuel, God is with us. Today, I want to share three purposes for my being here today. One is to get you to remember and to reawaken the reasons to worship God and to remind you that it is indeed because of this that God is with us. And this is a reason to worship and praise God. And three, to reignite your fire for social justice because God is with us. How many of you would agree that God is with us? Yes? Okay, well, let's make it more personal. How many of you believe that God is with you? Good numbers, good numbers. So some know and some... um, How many of you know God is with you? Okay, so different... different, we're, we're, We're in there somewhere, right? Given the climate of our nation and around the world, one might be tempted to wonder if God is yet here or if God has taken a sabbatical. (laughs) Maybe God has gotten fed up with humans and their own self-righteousness. Maybe God has gotten fed up with humans' ignorance and humans' abuse of the planet and even oppression of each other. And for good reason, Maybe God has said, I have done all that I can do. I have shown them my love and care and they reject it. I have shown them my power and they do not receive it or reverence it. I have shown them my power and they have shown, bless them, and they have taken it for granted. I have prospered them and they've squandered it. They are just mean and nasty and hateful, and sometimes I can't even see myself in them. So maybe God has said, I'll take a break before they continue to break my heart. That, beloved, is what we would do, no? Before we let you break us, we will abandon you. Yeah? Well, thank God, God is not like us. God is with us, Through the birth of Jesus, Emmanuel, the Prince of Peace, Lily in the Valley, the Lamb of God, is indeed with us. This is what the Advent season reminds us of and what Advent is calling us to today. Advent, more than just heralding the coming of the Messiah or the Christ, it is a renewal of the call to become the Christ ourselves, to be agents of justice, and witnesses on behalf of God that all of God's creation has value, that not one person deserves to be sacrificed to death, pain, or oppression. This Advent season, as we recognize that Emmanuel is with us, that God is with us, we are called again to social justice and to minister to everyone without prejudice, that even though it seems like the enemies are encamped around us, We are surrounded by God. The enemies that are surrounding us are too surrounded by God. And that, beloved, is the ultimate in being surrounded. When you look up at your Philistines like David did, 
When you look at the armies and chariots of Pharaoh coming after you like Moses and the Hebrews did. When you look out at the crowd screaming, crucify, crucify, you can just look a tad further and see the spirit of God, the angels and ancestors and the full presence of God surrounding every situation and you know that God is with us. See, now in my cultural tradition, worship tradition, those recollections would be enough to have some folks running and praising through the aisles, <laughs> worshiping, or have some of them crying at the altar or in their pews with their eyes streaming with tears. They might hum a tune and think, as I look back over my life, and I think things over. I can truly say that I've been blessed. I have a testimony. So we might be singing that song or thinking that song as tears as they're looking and reflecting on their lives and often saying, I don't know how I got over. You might remember a Mahalia Jackson song where she sang how I got over. My soul looks back and wonders how I got over. It is because God is with us that we are getting over, that we can get over. Look, so, 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 okay, let, let's, let me, before I get ahead of myself, let's take a moment and let's look at these scriptures, right? So 2 Kings 6, 8 through 17. Now the king of Aram was at war with Israel, and after conferring with his officers, he said, I will set up my camp in such and such a place. The man went, the man of God sent the word to the king of Israel, beware of passing that place because Armenian, the Armenians are going down there. So the king of Israel checked on the place indicated by the man of God. Time and again, Elijah warned the king so that he was on guard in such places. This enraged the king of Aram. He summoned his officers and demanded of them, tell me which of us is on the side of the king of Israel. None of us. My lord king, said one of his officers. But Elisha, the prophet who is in Israel, who is in Israel, tells the king of Israel the very words you speak in your bedchamber. Okay, so let me pause here. Let's put this in some context for us today, because just reading the scriptures has to be made relevant to our lives today, yes? So let's define some terms and, and unpack the scriptures. One of the greatest gifts God has given us is the message within the message in scriptures. So from a metaphysical interpretation, we find some relevance of today. So Aram means the intellect of humanity. The way we think, process, we got it, we know it, we understand it, we searched it, we, we researched it, we got it, right? Israel represents the spiritual consciousness or the awakening. And Elijah represents the salvation of God. So if we go back and look at this a little bit different and said, now the king, the, thing, the one who thinks they know it all, was at war with the spiritual consciousness. And after conferring with the army in his head, his officers in his head, said, I'm going to set up, I know what to do. I know how to put things in place. I know A from B and C. I know Pythagorean's theory. I, will, I know how to get this. I can handle this spiritual stuff. Whatever that is, I got it. It's, we're going to intellectualize it and we're going to make it make sense. So the man of God sent word to the king of Israel. Again, to the king, the one who is enlightened or is coming into spiritual consciousness. Beware of going to that place because they're coming down here. They're coming, they're coming to get you. So the king checked and, and went around it. He avoided it, right? Spiritual, our spiritual selves will know and God will guide us when we need to go a different way or do a different thing. Yes? You with me? So, 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 so then the king of intellect, the one that is thinking he's got it all together, right, is angry. Who is on the side of the spirit? None of us, because we know how to do this. We don't need spirit to tell us how to touch lives and do things. We want to do what we've been doing. We have rules and process. That's what we're going to do. So no, we, we with you, King. We got you. But the salvation of God tells the spiritual consciousness how to avoid your intellectual traps. 
Scripture goes on and says that go find out where he is, who, where Elijah is. Where, this, where is the salvation of God, intellect orders, so that I can send my men, so I can send my rules and my stuff, what I know, my research, and capture, contain him. He is in Dothan. Now, Dothan, in this case, represents laws and customs. You see where we're going? So we, he is in the place where we live by and abide by laws and customs. So the king sends the chariots and strong force there by night and goes to surround them. And the servant comes and says, oh, my Lord, what shall we do? Well, servant is one who has some spiritual enlightenment, but is stuck in human living. Hasn't quite made the transition between what I what I see and can feel is like what I what I what I what I what I think right what I, I'm have to go with what I see and what I feel but I know something else is out there anybody ever been there yeah where well, we 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 spiritually we we, we but I don't know because because you know I, this this right here I know this right I know this God what you're talking about over here. I trust you, but I don't know about that, right? We have, some, we have a lot of examples in Scripture of, I trust you, but I don't know about that. They, they run and go the opposite way until they, they, they have to, right? So Elijah says, do not be afraid. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elijah prayed, open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see. Open the eyes so that we might see. The Lord opened the servant's eyes and looked and he saw full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elijah. And here is the point of today's message. It may look like we're surrounded to the human eye. But what we have to know in spirit is that we are surrounded, in fact, by God and the presence of God. That presence is greater than anything we can see around us. The truth is that God is greater than any enemy that comes to overtake us. God is greater and has decreed greater for you no matter what your enemy surrounds you because you are surrounded by the presence of God. All we have to do is ask God to open our eyes and let us see that is true and what God's presence is bringing us to in every situation. It's a simple prayer. Open my eyes, Lord, so I may see. We call this discernment. It comes from being spiritually awakened and understanding the difference between what we see in the natural eye versus what God is setting up for us in the spiritual. The goal is not to allow ourselves to be seduced by things we think we know, our intelligence, our education, our holiness, or, and recognize that things of God defy those of the natural world. That what we know is no comparison to what God is calling us into being for us. That only surrender and reliance on God can save us from the enemies and even from ourselves. Our intellect, it's correct though, that we should be able to define, understand, and even contain God in our own understanding. But what's true is that God is greater than our intellect and our education in that it takes discernment and spiritual awakening to truly see who God is and what God is doing with us, through us, around us, and as us. So let me ask you again, how many would agree that God is with us? How many would say that God is with you? That's that little old you. One speck of cosmic energy in the grand scheme of the total universe or universes in all of creation and in the vastness of the all-knowing, omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent God, the God of the Old Testament, the God who showed up in the New Testament and brought both God as divine human, Jesus, and God as Holy Spirit, the same God who delivered the Hebrew people from the hands of Pharaoh and brought them through the desert for 40 years and into the promised land, delivered those boys out the fiery furnace, even empowered Deborah and Dorcas. God who knows the hairs on your head, or for some of us, the hairs that once was on your head. 
The God who raised Jesus the Christ from the dead, the God who declares, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. The same God who even while having the whole world in hand still stops long enough to comfort you in your time of distress, who blesses you and when you pray, stops heaven and answers prayers. This is the God that is with us. And this is the God that surrounds us. Do you know that God is with you and that God is indeed with us? If you do, then there ought to be a waving of your hand. Say amen or hallelujah. hallelujah. Tell your testimony to someone, anyone who will listen to how awesome God is and has been in your life. There should be some visual or audible sign of how God is moving in you, with you, through you, as you, and God is indeed with you. And in this, we know that God is with us. We cry out, Emmanuel, Emmanuel, God is with us. As we move towards the celebration of the birth of Jesus, who was destined to become the Christ, not just for his own sake, but, so, but to show us the way to be the Christ in our own lives and for those around us. This same God that lives in Jesus lives in us and is indeed with us. Because we are surrounded by God and God is with us, God is on our side. We declare with our whole bodies and all our resources, we will fight because black lives matter and we will no longer tolerate modern day lynching and pipeline to prison for black youth. That in the wealthiest nation in the world, we, that, that poverty and homelessness and exploitation must be eradicated. Because we are surrounded by God and God is with us, we fight and declare that every gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgendered, non-binary, genderqueer child or person deserves to be free from shame and abuse. Because we are surrounded by God and God is indeed with us, we declare that women's rights and equity must be achieved now, not later. And we will not be silent. Because we are surrounded by God and God is with us, we declare that we will be anti-racist, anti-oppressionist, and work to end white supremacy, misogyny, and patriarchy. Because God is with us, we and we are surrounded by God, we will no longer tolerate bigotry, classism, or elitism in any form, not even in our own churches. Yes, you see, there are armies surrounding us, armies of oppression, armies that politicize women's bodies and health, armies that, and legions of demonic forces that are trying to tear apart the very life and soul of the church to neuter it and make it useless in addressing social and societal injustices. So beloved, though we are surrounded by evil, pain, diseases, and injustice, God is with us. And we are surrounded by God. This is the message of Advent this year. This is our continued call to be stronger together and not let our country and communities be divided by hatred. This is the message of the coming of Christ now. We have no fear because we know we are surrounded by God. Hallelujah. Emmanuel, God is with us. This is the message we enter Advent with, and this is the message of Christmas. Behold, Emmanuel, God is with us, and behold, we are surrounded by God. Luke says, praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come to his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of the servant of David, as he said through his holy prophets of long ago. Salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and remember his holy covenant, the oath he swore to our father Abraham to rescue us from the hand of our enemies and enable us to serve him without fear, to serve God without fear, in holiness and righteousness before God in all of our days. And you, my child, will be called a prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare a way for God to give God's people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins. Because the tender mercy of our God, by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven, to shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the path of peace.
transforming passion for the world is born of love. Having given praise, been reminded that we are loved and, in particip and participated in the building up of love together, we now prepare ourselves to be transformed by that love to do God's work in the world. Thank you, Pastor Darrell, for a wonderful sermon. Amen to that. Amen. Every Sunday, this church is here, gathered to worship and observe Sabbath. But church is more than what we do within these walls. It is a calling to the greater mission to meet people where they are and to embrace the new thing that God calls each of us into. Whatever that call may be for you and for this church, we thank you for all the ways that you support this church in time, talent, and money. Please feel free to give digitally through our website or by leaving a retiring offering in the offering plates as you exit after the service. Also, if you are in a place of urgent need due to the coronavirus, please contact a member of staff to make use of our Deacon's Relief Fund, which we have set aside. Thank you for all your gifts and your giving.
Friends, we share our prayers, hope, and concern together, confident that God listens to our prayers and calls us together in response. We invite you to share these prayers now by raising a hand in the sanctuary and sharing them after being called or by commenting on our YouTube page. After each prayer, we say, God, in your grace and mercy, hear our prayer. I'm going to give the first notation of the day. Kayla, how wonderful. Thank you for being here with us and lending us your talent. Also, I want to recognize Dr. Kathleen Orr as the accompanist today. This was an extremely difficult job because this thing is not originally for piano and, and the soloist. It's for orchestra. And poor Kathleen was having to sit there with an orchestral reduction playing this thing. <laughs> Blessings to you, Kathleen. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. I would like our whole church to pray for Jesse as he has more tests this week and has decisions to make on what to do. And so please keep him in your prayers. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. And Jesse, thank you for still being here while you're working your way through your medical issues. We are sincerely grateful for all you are doing for our church. I like a, if we could say a prayer for my friend Nina, who just received an injection, injection in her hip. It's painful for her to even walk. So I'm praying, praying for uh, the doctor's suggestion to help her and uh, have this pass away from her. God, in your grace and mercy, hear our prayer. Uh, prayers for me. I'm facing minor surgery in the next few weeks. It shouldn't be too much, but just prayers for that. Thank you. Graham, we pray that your surgery goes well. God, in your grace and mercy, hear our prayers. I have my first prayer of gratitude. I have the boot off, and after three months, Yay. I can walk. <laughs> that's, that's been a, a real relief. Um, so thank you for all the prayers you've had. Um, the other one is prayer for hope. My little uh, great nephew, who's nine years old with geoblastoma, has uh, one more um, only one more hope that he can have on uh, Thursday they find out if this new drug will stop the growth of the, uh, the brain tumor and that's the last we hope we have so God you got to hear us. Kathy we uh, pray for your continued recovery and also for your nephew which we know is a horrible situation that the young child is having to go through. God in your grace and mercy hear our prayers. Prayers for my cousin's family. I my cousin went out hunting and was found dead. <coughs> Prayers for his wife, his family, and my, all my cousins and their families. Kathy, we pray for your cousin's family and relatives for this tragic event. God, in your grace and mercy, hear our prayers. And a prayer of gratitude that because of God, I was able to enjoy the squirrels at the bird feeder this morning. <laughs> Thank you, Rick. God, in your grace and mercy, hear in our prayers. Oftentimes we forget to say thank you for prayers answered. My friend Marcy, who has been uh, undergoing chemo and uh, lately radiation. She seems to be doing well. She had all her kids and grandkids come and there was a huge crowd for Thanksgiving and uh, we all went out to dinner in a restaurant. It was fantastic and she enjoyed her 70th birthday at that celebration. So for all the prayers, thank you so much and God in your grace and mercy. Here are our prayers. I'd also like a prayer of uh, gratitude and thanks for Lee Dodson back here who has booked every one of our pastors during this time for the last three months and who will continue to book our pastors till we get a new interim. Thank you. 
and thank you, Pastor, for being here today. We've had some marvelous um, pastors, and it's been very hard um, after having Pastor Ryan for eight years to adjust, but thank you for being here today. God, in your grace and mercy, hear are our prayers. Any others? Friends, we now pause in silence to hold those prayers which we have not given voice to today. God, in your grace and mercy, hear our prayer. Let us now conclude our prayer with the prayer for peace saying, O loving God, spirit of hope and peace, lead us from death to life, lead us from falsehood to truth, lead us from despair to hope, from feast to trust, let us from hate to love, from war to peace. Let peace fill our hearts, our world, our universe. Peace, peace, peace. Amen, amen, alleluia. May God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. For you, creator God, the valleys laugh and sing, and the trees of the field clap their hands. Your earth summons us to break silence and to be one with the song of creation. We give you thanks and praise. For you, God of all, the church in its myriad forms and countless languages honors its savior. Millions upon millions invite us to be one with them in the drama of worship. We give you thanks and praise. In heaven, beyond our seeing, the angels and saints are caught up in song, and those we have loved and lost are part of that great company. They call us to be one with the harmony of heaven. We give you thanks and praise. So gladly we join our voices to those of earth, sea, and sky in the universal hymn of praise which echoes through time and eternity. Holy, 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 holy God, God of power and, power and might, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your, of your glory. glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Lord. Hosanna in, the in the highest. Now, God, we come again in this sacred moment to remember you, to remember the life of Jesus the Christ, remember the sacrifice made those many, many years ago, but that is ever present with us now. We ask God now that you would bless the sacraments, bless this wine, this juice, and this bread, that it would represent your body and your blood, and that we would never forget that we are intimately and infinitely connected to you, our divine source of life and strength. Amen. Lamb of God, take away the sin of the world and have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. As those who have been invited to this table feed on this holy food through which God comes to us so that we can come to God, we eat of the bread and drink of the cup. Brother Jesus, who, had been, who have been guests at your table, come with us wherever we go and be present in all we share. Summon out and in us who you have fed generously its spirit to ensure that all the hungry are nourished and earth's barren places are fertile with food, faith, hope, and love. Amen. So, at that time, th this represents more than just the, the doing of something, right? The bread represents that which will sustain us, no matter where we find ourselves and in our state of hunger, bread sustains us. And the fluid, the juice, the wine represents the blood of Christ that fills us no matter what shape we are, no matter how broken or how crooked or how thick 
or thin or tall or short or light or dark. It fills us whoever we are. So we invite you now to join with us as we take our communion. And we take the bread, we break it in remembrance of the broken body of Christ for us, Jesus for us. Take and eat. And we take the cup. So hopefully you're not having the trouble with the, 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 the top one is the, the bread and then the second one is the juice. And we remember the blood and sacrifice of Christ. Let us drink together. Christian friends rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Give you heed to what we say. Jesus Christ is born today. Ox and ass before him bow, and he is in the manger now. Christ is born today. Christ is born today. Christian friends rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Now we need no fear to grave. Jesus Christ was born to save. Christ to born and calls you all to gain the everlasting call. Christ was born to save. Christ was born to save. And so now as we prepare to leave from this place, never from the presence of God, we once again renew our commitment to each other, commitment to the work of this house of God, commitment to our communities, commitment to our families, commitment to our Christ. And God bless us as we go and keep us safe until we are together again. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ and, and the, the love Lord of God and the companionship of the Holy Spirit, Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.